Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Face the Truth. Thank you to Wacom for being an awesome sponsor for the podcast, giving away a Cintiq for every episode. That's pretty awesome. So thank you for Wacom for that. Um, also, pay attention during this episode as there's going to be a little pop quiz or question rather um, at some point. And whoever answers and replies first, they're going to win a subscription for the Adobe Creative Cloud for one year. There's going to be plenty more opportunities, um, so don't worry if you miss out. You'll have a chance uh, to do that again. So yeah, uh, not much going on except for normal work and life and that sort of a thing. Just finished a cover for the Washington Examiner this week. It was a lot of fun. Um, let's see, what, what else? What else is going on? Not much is going on. Just getting ready for spring, uh, winter. It looks like it's finally over here in Chicago. It's starting to warm up, which is nice. Get outside, go for walks, take the dog for long walks. That's nice. It's been a, l a little bit cold the last few months, so I um, haven't gotten to enjoy that. But um, anyways, it's, it's nice uh, when the spring comes around. I can't wait to go fishing this summer uh, up in North Wisconsin, hang out with my brother and go fishing. Um, that's always a lot of fun. So anyways, um, I had a really good talk this week with my guest, uh, Mike Thompson. He's a he's an awesome guy, really cool man. Like, just feels very natural hanging out and talking with him. And uh, I definitely want to have him on again and uh, get into it even more um, because, you know, he's 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 a really he's a really talented guy, but really easy to talk to. Like, uh, I just felt like you know like good buddies that, that that haven't talked for a while and catching up. Even though we are friends, we don't know each other that well. You know, we've we've talked a couple times, but. I feel like I know him even better now. So he's an awesome guy. He's, a, a, you know, kind of talking me into trying out Painter. Um, I'm definitely interested in that. And I'm really interested after talking with him uh, about trying out ZBrush. Uh, that sounds really cool. Yeah, something something about being able to, to take the art that I do now and turn it into 3D sculpts. That just sounds like an amazing thing. And then being able to light it any way I want and gives me a little bit more freedom you know so I'm, I'm tempted to try that out i think i might might give it a go mike definitely sold me on that <laughs> but you probably know uh mike from uh you know his his work you know for he's done a lot of work for magazines and video games and uh, movie posters toy packaging uh he's he's worked for tons and tons of different clients clients like dc comics marvel entertainment warner brothers cartoon network nike you know on and on so the guy's been around the block this man knows his shit <laughs> So, without further ado, my friend, Mr. Mike Thompson. So, cool. Mike Thompson, thank you so much for uh, being on my podcast, man. I really appreciate hey, this. Thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Um, uh, I, think, I think I uh, first met, or not really met you in person yet, but uh, saw your work um, maybe 10 years or more ago. Um, mm -hmm. I think I can't remember the name of the movie, but, um, you, there was a movie poster at the movie theater mm -hmm. and, and I was like, Oh, that's awesome. That looks painted. And I walked up and I looked at it and I'm like, yeah, that's painted. Like, <laughs> wow, it's amazing. It's, 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 um, it was like a comedy, I think. With, was it youth and revolt with Michael Sarah? Yes. Yes. That, that's yeah. the one. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, and I was like, Oh, that's awesome. So I, I was like, I want to find out who did that just because, um, I was just excited that art was being used on a movie poster, you know? Right. And that's yeah. how I found you. And I, I think I sent you a message or something and like, Hey man, cool work. And then, and I think, um, we've kind of been in touch ever since, but, but yeah, I really, um, I like, I like your work a lot because you have, uh, a, you know, you've got a, a nice realism to it, but also a lot of fantasy, um, even in, you know, you know, work like that movie poster, for example, just the mm -hmm. style of, of your painting. Um, what I really like about it is that you always let everybody know that it's a painting, you know, right. that, that it's illustrated. Right. Um, so I really appreciate that because um, at that time, um, when I when I saw that, you know, I, I was kind of getting turned off by a lot of the digital art that I was seeing because mm -hmm. it, it just looks like a lot of photo manipulation and that kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so for me personally, my favorite stuff is like, like, Hey, that's a painting, you know? <laughs> totally, man. You know, that's funny that you say that because that's actually like the whole reason that I took up illustration was I, um, you know, going to movies as a kid, everything was painted by Drew Struzan. Yeah. And you would just, you know, ET and star Wars, Indiana Jones. And I would see all that stuff and I would just be like, I want to do this. You know, it, it was, it was one of those things where you would see the image 
and without even seeing the movie, it captivated your imagination. You know what I mean? Yeah. So. Oh um, yeah, totally. Yeah. So that, that that's funny. And, and your your story of seeing my stuff is interesting. I never knew that because I actually uh, I got one of your books, like the first one, and uh, I used to show my wife, and we would kind of go through it and everything. I'm like, man, this guy's killing it. This stuff is really cool. <laughs> um, and uh, and then we kind of hooked up and everything. I'm like, this is dope. I, I I think it was the time cover that you did with the Pope on it. Yeah. Was like the breakthrough thing because just like you're saying with movies, everything is photographed. You know what I mean? Like nobody, yeah. nobody uses, uh, nobody uses illustration anymore. It's all photography. So Yeah. And it's annoying. You know, I've actually had uh, experiences recently a couple times now where I was commissioned by pretty big publications to do a painting of a of, of particular people. And, uh, I did the work very, very proud of it. And, mm -hmm. and they were, and then I sent it in. They're like, "Whoa, this is awesome!" And they're like, "This is really great work." And then I'm waiting to see the the work published, and it's finally it's published. And I look at yeah. it, and yeah. they use a friggin' photograph, uh, and 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 one in particular, <laughs> they mm -hmm. used a crazy, terrible black and white photo that was like, um, like just looked like an old photo that just wasn't even. They didn't even bother to like fix it up or anything sure i just did a beautiful in color painting for you and you used a right. black and white photo you know that has ever happened to you before that kind of stuff i drives me uh, nuts. yeah you know what i do a lot of it's like that movie thing you're talking about like I, I work with a company i've been doing a lot of movie posters but they're what will happen is they're pitches for the studio and uh what what i'll do is they'll give me a week to put something together you know, give me the brief and everything and I'll, I'll shoot it to them. I just did one for something last night. I had to do it overnight, but, um, you know, one out of every five pieces is used and more often than not, they go with photography. Yeah. So I did, I did this one, one time for, uh, it was, a, it was kind of a stupid movie, but it was, um, a movie called first Sunday hmm. and it had uh Tracy Morgan, Cat Williams and, um, ice cube in it. Oh, okay. and I did, you know, I'm like, I'm a big fan of the black exploitation type of posters. Yeah. Um, and so I, I, I laid it out so it looked like it could have been shaft or something like that. You oh, know what that's I mean? awesome. Yeah. Yeah, man. And, <laughs> uh, so I, I mean, I, I really put my foot in that one. I really liked it and everything turned it in and it turned out they went with, not only did they go with a, a photo, but they used a, it looked like somebody took it on one of those little crappy little, you know, uh, cheap phone or uh, cameras. Oh, like a like, um, yeah, like a re yeah, reusable. Little, little, yeah, a little yeah. point and shoot. <laughs> but it was uh, they had a picture of Ice Cube and um, and Tracy Morgan next to each other, just big head, and then in the middle a picture. The composition was terrible. The Cat Williams was in the middle of it. Yeah, and they didn't use it. So I was super bummed out about that. Yeah. Um, the one redeeming quality about that whole story is that I got a call from the director of the movie who was like, man, this is garbage. They didn't use it. It was totally the studio. Um, and I got a relationship with him and we kind of worked on stuff since then. But you know, yeah. more, more, more times than, than, uh, than I would like to admit they've, they've done that gone with, you know, a really bad photo. Uh, yeah. That's really frustrating. I actually just had a really bad, annoying thing happen. I just finished a cover today or mm -hmm. I finished it yesterday. Um, but, uh, the, like two days ago I was working on it and I was, um, it's, it's three likenesses and I spent all day killing it, you know, working mm -hmm. on the three faces, just blocking them in, you know, um, super tired. I was also working at a different job. So I'm like, just super tired. I save it at, or I thought I saved it. Mm -hmm. I go to bed at night and I, and it was one of those stupid things where I didn't back it up. I, you oh, know, no. it was like, I don't, I was so tired. I was not thinking clearly. Um, they wanted to see an update on it, so I sent it before I went to bed. Right. I wake up the next morning. I open up my Photoshop file, and it's a flattened JPEG. Oh my god! <laughs> oh no! All pixelated, and so then I had to uh, basically start from scratch again. I mean, I I, I just I changed the, the seventy two to three hundred, mm -hmm. and I kind of cut around the heads, and I I. So I could start working on it again. Do a paint over, yeah. And then I just so I just used that as a foundation and just had to go in there and just like clean clean everything up and just. Um, but it it added like a whole another day basically, uh, to so, a very short deadline already. 
Yeah. Oh, that, it sucks when that's such a. That's the worst. I was going to ask you how you handle that because I, I hate when, you know, when you spend time like laboring on something and you yeah. get the. Like, it's not like uh, for me anyway. Uh, when I'm doing a likeness, there's a lot of times where I have to take a few passes at it until I kind of really dial it in. Yeah. But when you really get it and you can step back and go have lunch and come back and look at it again and you're like, okay, I got this one. Yeah. And, and something happens for me, like I, I like to use Corel painter a lot and, uh, every once in a while it'll crash out on me and it doesn't matter which application it is, whether it's painter, ZBrush, whatever, it's always at the most inopportune time. Yeah. And yep. it, it's always when you're in such a flow that you just don't save. Yeah. And, you know, like you just uh, and it's the simplest thing hitting, you know, the, the command S and saving or whatever. But I always <laughs> forget it. And so, uh, I mean, not always forget it, but when I do, I crash. Yeah, I got this thing on, on uh, for my my Wacom. Yeah, uh, this and I so I'll hold, I hold this in my hand while I'm working on stuff and I just push this mm -hmm. button every once in a while. Save, <laughs> yeah. save. Yeah. But uh, what I did the rest of that project was I just I, I just every time I took a break. I mm -hmm. copied it to my Dropbox because I was just like, that's not happening again. But uh, now, I, you, I, I you kind know of... what Dropbox did. Did you know that it does the because uh, I work off Dropbox, too. And a friend put me onto this. I had done kind of like what you were doing. I was working on a project where it was a really stiff deadline and it absolutely had to be turned in at, you know, like noon on West Coast time or whatever. Right. So um, I had finished it uh, and I got to a point where something happened and the file was corrupted. Mm -hmm. I don't know what happened to it, but it, it just, I had like a, a big bar of, you know, just like, it looked like a mosaic in the middle of the oh, thing. Oh, that's happened to me before. Uh. So, so I, I was like, <laughs> Oh my God, I'm, I'm like, I'm done because that was my one file. You know, like I usually do iterative saves, Yeah. but because it was such a tight turnaround, I did the one file and I was just like, I'm, <clears throat> I'm screwed here. Um, but I talked to a friend and, uh, in Dropbox, there's a save history where every time you save, it keeps that. Did you know that? You can connect Dropbox to saving when you're saving in Photoshop or whatever program? Yeah, well, I, I, I save right on to, like I have all my clients in my Dropbox folder. Yeah. Um, so all of my work is stored right there. It's on my computer as well. It mirrors it. But Yeah, um, I don't know how to set, the, you'll have to explain to me how, later how to do oh, it. Best yeah. thing ever, man, it saved, it saved my hide. Yeah, you. Yeah, when we're done, you gotta tell me. I did. That's awesome. No doubt. No um, doubt. but yeah. Um, so uh, what? What kind of? Have you been working on anything interesting lately that you can talk about? Like something that? Um, yeah. You've been uh, busting your balls on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I'm. I'm. I guess over the past few years, I've been really getting into, um, uh, 3D sculpting. Yeah. You know? So like digital sculpting. Um, and, uh, just because I've been painting for so many years, like I'm, I'm no young dude now, man, I've been at this for a minute. So I wanted to try something different. Uh, I got into ZBrush and so, um, I you know, still, yeah, I want to try that. Some I still, I have, I just, that's one of those things like you inspired me to, to get into it like a couple of years back and I still haven't gotten into it. Yeah. <laughs> it, yeah. I want yeah, to now, though. Did you ever, cause I know we had a conversation a long time ago. Did you ever start using Corel? Using paint? I, you know what? It's like, it's like that saying. It's hard to teach an old dog new tricks. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I, I tried to, and I went. I still would like to mess around with it. But what ends up happening is, for me, um, there's so many like toggles and different settings and different things. And mm -hmm. I'm a traditional painter at heart. Like, I just finished an oil yeah. painting, and um, I, I, I love um, the simplicity of a paintbrush mm -hmm. and the paint watercolor yeah. oil whatever it is yeah and and then i'm just using my brain in my hand and i'm creating sure. a piece of art so yeah. when i work in photoshop i i i i i use layers um i used to hardly i used to not really use layers but mm -hmm. um now i do use layers quite a bit but i i tend to use them just for a little bit and then flatten down um i like sure. to keep it very simple i don't like to have yeah. all this craziness um i don't like having tons of tons of colors yeah. Keep it very simple, very basic. I try to, it's, you know, I basically just use the paintbrush tool and the eraser mm -hmm. tool. Mm -hmm. um, and that's pretty much it. I don't, and so when I, when I started messing around with, um, with painter, there was just so much like different, like subtle settings and different things. And, I, and it kind of overwhelmed me. It was just like, sure. this is craziness. Like, um, but 
I like I see your work and I've seen other people like that use it and I'm like it looks pretty damn good. Um, like you, I can like I like the 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 way that the the paint is applied. Like I can kind of always tell sometimes that it's painter. Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so I definitely you know I'm not opposed to it for sure. Mm -hmm. You know I just don't know. Um, and, and the other thing is, is it's hard for me to, like, I don't have much experimental time. Mm, like, right. um, I've got an iPad pro mm -hmm. and I love sketching on that thing. It's so much yeah. fun. Same thing with that though. Like I've start looking at the settings on that. Like you can open up like the pencil or whatever. And there's like just way too many things that you can do. Sure. And I'm like, yeah, I just need it to draw. <laughs> um, but I've had that thing for like a year and a half or so. And I've mm -hmm. not, I've rarely done any painting with it. Um, I've only basically use it just for sketching and I'll do like mm -hmm. kind of like value block ins. Mm -hmm. Um, and the reason is, is cause I don't have too much free time for messing Learning around and stuff. Yeah it's, yeah, yeah. I, it's always, I'm always working on something. So it's, you know what I mean? And then if I have free time, I, I want to oil paint or something. <laughs> sure. I'm the same way. So like I, um, I started the same way as a, a digital, I mean, sorry, as a, a traditional artist, um, with, uh, acrylics were my thing. And, um, so I used to work on cold press board with, you know, zero double zero brushes and it would take yeah. months for me to do one piece. But, <laughs> um, you know, when it got to painter, the only way it's funny because I had, uh, I had seen some of the results that they had gotten with early versions of painter and it wasn't quite there yet, but it was still, it was still looking very, you know, very kind of uh done outside of uh, digital means um and that was my thing like i always i never wanted to be that guy where you would see my work and immediately know i painted on a computer yeah you know what i mean oh yeah so um by by uh starting to play around with painter i was the same way i looked at it and for me it might as well have been something like you know flight simulator or something yeah. there was just all these i'm like god how do i just i just want to paint something so um I ended up getting a relationship with them. I'm one of their, they call them painter masters. I, I love how all these companies have these pretentious names for the people that <laughs> kind of hawk their stuff. Yeah. But, uh, so, um, I went out to Canada to the office and I would just sit down and talk to these guys and, you know, I'm like, you got way too many brushes. It's, it's really confusing. It's just stuff all over the screen. Can we simplify it? Yeah. And so they actually, I think it was on version uh, 2015, maybe. Um, they had a workspace set up that that I I kind of figured out for illustrators, where all that crap is gone, man. Mm. You have like a you have a small brush palette. It's you know these core that that's how I learned it. Like I I think I had a issue where I had uh, updated my my Mac OS, and um, it didn't want to play nice with Photoshop, so. I couldn't use Photoshop. I had, a, you know, like you, I had a job that was due and I was like, God, what am I going to do? So it forced me to have to use painter and I turned off everything except for three brushes and, uh, cleared all that crap off the screen. And I forced myself to learn how to use those three brushes. And I just, you know, I, I it was sink or swim. I had to go through that job Yeah, and yeah. I got it done. And the thing I learned was, it was like, you know, green eggs and ham. It's like, oh, I like this now. So, um, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I, every, every week I would add a couple more brushes and it's still like a small set, mm -hmm. you know, maybe like, uh, eight, eight brushes that I really use. Yeah. But, um, man, I, I couldn't live without it now. Yeah. I you definitely, know? um, uh, yeah, you're selling it good. Like I, I definitely <laughs> would like to try it, you know, I, I, yeah. I, I mean, I mean, ultimately you know, I'm not opposed to it because I want to, uh, you know, it's all for me, it's all about, you know, painting and drawing and I want the work to be, have a strong aesthetic and, and quality mm -hmm. to it. Um, and with, and with what I do in Photoshop, um, I've, I've spent so many years developing my own technique of working digitally so that it, right. it kind of almost mirrors what I do traditionally. Cause I don't, I don't mm -hmm. want it to be that I, I don't want people to be like, Oh, man, he can really paint well digitally, but his traditional work is nothing like that. And yes, yeah. you know, so I want it to like, I want to, I just want to be an artist and whatever you see my work, that's my work. And, right. um, you know, actually I had something really weird recently. Um, uh, I, I did, I don't know if you saw, uh, I did a time cover, um, 
a, a month or two ago now. Um, mm-hmm. And while I was working on that cover, all this wacky stuff started happening. Like my, uh, and, and like it would, when I was working, all of a sudden it would just leave a mark where I didn't want a mark. Or mm-hmm. if I move my pen across, even though I'm not touching it, make a mark across the whole page. Right. Um, it was, it, I was selecting layers and moving them to a different spot. It was all these crazy nightmare mm-hmm. things were happening. It was so difficult to do that cover. Right. Um, I don't even know how I did it at all because I was having so many problems technically, so stressed out. And then after that, it got worse. It just got oh worse and worse. And so I was back and forth with Wacom and different people. Mm-hmm. I'm like, what is happening? I don't know what's going on. Um, and then I like there's all these things that they we got on the phone and they helped me out. And basically, um, it got to a point where I I was like, you know what? I think maybe my pen is dying. You know. Mm-hmm. And I was like, and I asked them, like, does that ha- happen often? Like, I mean, I don't know. And they're like, I don't really think that's the problem, but we'll send you a new pen. So they sent me a new right. pen right away, which was really cool. Mm-hmm. And dude, son of a bitch. It was just a pen? <laughs> yeah. But here's, oh here's the crazy thing about it. Mm-hmm. I started drawing with this, with this new pen. And I have never, in the time I've gotten this Cintiq, mm-hmm. it's never worked this good. Wow. And I realized that for the last two or three years, I've mm-hmm. been working with a terrible pen. And it, <laughs> it, the pen that came with it wasn't good. Yeah. Because the pen I have now, like every mark and everything, I'm just like, oh my gosh. I, it's like you, I, I have a, my power it, again. Is it this one, the uh, the 3D uh, pen, or is it, no. uh, is it the Slim, the new one? No, I, I don't know which one. It's I don't know if you can see that. Oh, okay. Yeah. That, that's like their art pen, too, yeah. or whatever yeah no i got that too but uh so but what's crazy is i realized that man i've been struggling for the last couple of years and didn't even realize it because it is my cintiq it's like i have a brand new cintiq now dude it is like so slick every brush yeah. um i just yeah. i just did a sketch um yesterday for a, a broadway poster thing that i'm working on and mm-hmm. i had to do like a color comp and i did it in like i did it in a record time and i before I didn't even know that I was struggling. I thought this is what this thing does. <laughs> this is just how and, it is. And like now it's like, holy crap, I just do this, this, this. And it's, whoa, I, I just feel like I have my power back or something. You're right. Um, right. The last couple covers I did were just so much fun. <laughs> I just now, had a, I'm like, this is awesome. Like, are, painting are is you on fun. A Mac or, I know, right? That's, yeah. That's crazy, man. Are you, are you on a Mac or a PC? I was on a Mac for many years. Um, uh-huh. And then uh, Wacom sent me the 27-inch Cintiq. Um, which was really nice of them, um, mm-hmm. and I it, my Mac was too old, couldn't handle it. It, yeah. it couldn't power it, yeah. and so for about a year or close, maybe half a year, I couldn't use uh, the Cintiq. Okay, and um, and my Mac was already dying. It was like things were happening to it. I had a like a tower, um, and then my friend Grieger, he was like, he's like, hey man, you know, he's like, forget Mac. He was mm-hmm. like, he's like, I can build you a PC that will fly spaceships and it'll sure. be like a small fraction of the amount. And so I was like, dude, all right, I hate PCs, but I'll trust you. Yeah. And so he got me hooked up. He's a really big gamer guy and everything. Mm-hmm. So he hooked mm-hmm. me up with like um, an awesome computer and it, I haven't hardly had any issues with it. It seems to be super powerful and yeah, uh, but I still don't like PC, like just the, like the layout and format and stuff. Yeah. Uh, you know what? I was a lifelong Mac user. Um, I mean, that's all I used until um, I think it was a year and a half ago. And I had an older, um, what was it, the Mac Pro, the old uh, cheese grater model, the giant one. Yeah, that's what I had, the big metal thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and and I was having issues. I was always having issues where things weren't working as well as they should. And I was like, you know what? Screw this. I'm going to build my own PC. And so I got um, like I, I, I got the, the, the parts and everything. And, that looks and, similar uh, to mine. Well, no, yeah, it's, it's a little different. but It's, it's pretty sweet. That's um, awesome. but, uh, yeah, man. So built this thing and, um, and I haven't looked back yet, but now the only thing about it is that, um, the, the windows operating system would come out with these updates like yes. these, oh. and it would cripple my Wacom. Yeah. So like I had to call them. I didn't know if it was Corel or Wacom, but all I knew was I had deadlines and the, the issue that I would have specifically is. It would take away my pressure sensitivity. Yep. 
So he, I mean, you try paint. It's like painting with a freaking mouse, man. Yeah, that happened. The same thing happened to me last summer. Um, mm -hmm. I was working on the project with Josh, mm -hmm. and um, <clears throat> same thing. All of a sudden, I have no pressure sensitivity. Nothing's working, and it was yeah. the, it was the updates. Uh, that was just annoying, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, so uh, what what kind of stuff are you doing? Um, as far as oh. uh, um, you know, because you're 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 doing you got really into the ZBrush stuff. Um, are you uh, my question, I guess, about that was, you know, because I'm not as familiar with it, but basically you can sculpt um, 3D. You can add mm -hmm. textures like like um, skin textures and clothing textures. And you yeah. Can, and then um, you can kind of create a character and then come up with your own lighting and everything. Yeah. So that's the thing that's interesting to me because part of, you know, what's hard as an illustrator um, that doesn't work that way is – you know, when I, when I'm working on a illustration for something, I have to, um, a lot of times I get someone to, to pose for me. Um, mm -hmm. and I, I kind of, I try to control the lighting as much as possible. I try mm -hmm. to put them in clothing that's similar to what I need or something that I can like base off of. And I take as many references as, as, as possible. And then I just, I get, I go right to, you know, to the drawing board and just start getting right. into it. But right. what's cool about the ZBrush thing is you can actually just create all of that in that program. Right. And that's that's yeah, that's exactly what I do. So that uh, I, I mean, not to not to divulge too much, but that collabo project that we worked on, you yeah. know, a couple of years ago, it was a nightmare because we were getting ref from 1980 something. Uh, it was right? terrible. So, <laughs> it was just it's the worst so, job I've ever worked on in my life. <laughs> I hate no it. Comment. <laughs> no comment. Yeah. Well, listen, on a side note. <laughs> okay, so I, I got new information about that. Yeah. As much of a pain in the ass as that job was, Madonna loved the final project. Oh, that's great. She actually well, told her people that she was really happy with it. So well, you're good. right. That was one of those jobs that <sighs> if I had to do it again, I'd put a gun to my head. But oh, um, It was the, so frustrating. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. So, so, uh, yeah, the whole the whole reason I started using ZBrush is, you know, as as an artist, you know, it's very, it's very rare when you get stellar reference. More often than not, it's kind of garbage. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. um, I've been very fortunate in working with companies like um, like Marvel, where they actually have set photos and things like that. But um, I started using that to just like you said, you know, I'm doing toy packaging. And I need to do a superhero that doesn't exist and I can't pose for it and my son's at school or whatever, you know what I mean? So I can't take pictures of anybody. Um, so like my gateway into 3D was um, a program called Poser. Uh, and I got Poser and used it for a while. Then I got Daz Studio, which is a free app uh, where it has all these kind of – it has the people in there and you can kind of position them how you want and light it. Hmm. And it, it, it does kind of the trick, you know what I mean? Like, it's okay. Um, but then I had a friend who was using uh, ZBrush. He was, we were working on, like, the Rise of Cobra stuff, the G.I. Joe stuff back in the day. And I'm like, God, man, this dude is making armor for his guy. He's making helmets and this, that, and the other, and I'm struggling. Yeah. I remember there was, a, there was a character I was working on that had this helmet that had all these weird angles on it. And... Um, and it was very hard to to figure out, you know, figure it out without any kind of reference. So uh, picked it up, started using it, um, watched a lot of YouTube videos and bought a lot of books and, you know, was checking out like Ryan Kingsland and stuff like that to learn how to use this thing. And just, again, persistence, you know what I mean? Like I, I didn't have a choice. Um, and so I kind of forced myself to learn it and, you know, flash forward five years later and I, I love it, you know. I use it all the time. So you you were asking me. Yeah. I keep dodging this question, oh, but you were asking me what what I'm working on now. So I, uh, Pixelogic, which is the company that makes ZBrush, picked me up as one of their 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 guys. So I do a, a bi monthly stream or bi weekly stream for them. Hmm. Um, you know, every other week I come on and for three hours, uh, I'm working on like a Captain Marvel zombie thing now. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah. So that's fun. And they let me do whatever I want. I mean, it's it's, you know, um I think I was working on uh Bishop from the X-Men and some G4 stuff, things like that. Um how, how long does it take uh to to cuz I mean this ZBrush to me seems like it seems like a great tool 
and uh, mm-hmm. I definitely want to. I'm, I'm very in, interested in you know messing with that, but um, like it'd be interesting to try to do like like a three dimensional caricature of someone. It'd be pretty mm-hmm. awesome, um, and then paint on top of it. You know what yep. I mean? That would be so much fun. But I don't really even have a clue of how to start any of that. Um, just to think about it, it just seems so overwhelming to me. Like the you know the sculpting of it and everything, but. How could you talk a little bit about about the process? Just I'm just curious, like, and how long it takes to actually to yeah. do like something like that. Yeah, totally. So, um, I used to like to you know mess around with uh, Super Sculpey, and I would you know just the idea of sculpting. I, I I had a fascination with like the old masters could always sculpt, and that made their drawings better. Or they could draw, and that made their sculptures better. Yeah. So. I was I was that way and I was like, all right, I gotta I gotta learn this. And so I would, you know, play with Sculpey. It would generally suck. Um, but I got the idea of how to, you know, make my armature and build it up and all that. <clears throat> um that translates exactly into uh into ZBrush. So when I think I was I was telling you earlier, instead of it feeling like an application like a 3D app, mm-hmm. which I can't I can't wrap my head around the Z axis that well, you know, I'm, I've always been 2d. So, um, what I'll do is, uh, like it, it, you're drawing on the mass and, you know, kind of removing it the same way and we're rotating your character around doing that kind of stuff and just building up forms the same way, hmm. the same exact way that you approach an illustration where you're blocking out your major forms first and then you go in and you refine, refine, refine until you get your finished piece. Same exact way I, I, I handle my sculpts. Oh, okay. So it took me, I mean, if I'm being honest, uh, to, to get any good, it took me really kind of grinding for a couple years. Yeah. Um, but that was only because I had to go back and revisit things that I never really was super strong at before. Like, I mean, I, I've always thought I had anatomy kind of figured out. But it's one of those things where, you know, I didn't know insertion points or muscles and you don't have to know all that, but it's good to have books that you can kind of flip through and and look at it. So, uh, so I have a question, uh, another question. This is, uh, my, my mind is going all over the place with this because Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm thinking like, cause I would really love to, uh, like for example, take a caricature of, uh, you know, someone like Pelosi or somebody like that that I've done and then turn that into a 3d where I can turn it at any angle and light it Mm -hmm. anyway. I mean, that sounds like complete like power. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's awesome. Like, like you can't mess with me anymore. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like that's what it seems like. I have the power. And Um, you know, what's even better than that. (laughs) I'm like, I'm I'm, I'm like so excited in my mind right now. I'm like, this is like, I, I'm definitely like, dude, you're like a salesman. Cause uh, <laughs> like you got me like really curious about <laughs> painter now and okay, gotta get so, ZBrush. Well, just to, <laughs> just to let you know how helpful it is, right? I got a I got a call yesterday. I was working on something, um, and I had just pulled an all nighter. Like I, I'm, I'm older than ever, and I'm pulling more all nighters than I've done since college. But I'm like, all right, I got to grind, man. I got to make some money. Yeah. So I was working on a project for for this one client, pulled an all nighter. But I had kind of stopped what I was doing from this other thing just to slide it in. And uh, and then I get back to working on my project and I got a call from uh, the client and they were like, listen, we know you use ZBrush. We have uh, we have one of our artists is working on this piece and he painted this ship. It's like a, you know, like a transformer spaceship or something. And he painted it, but it's at the slightly at the wrong angle. So they they showed me the reference image that they you know that somebody else had uh, that he was um, you know that he was using and the ship was like you know it was like this and his was like this right so yeah. it did make sense because he's following somebody else and uh-huh. it, it it you know it didn't look right so they're like can you give us a model of the ship that he can use as reference to do the painting because he's struggling with this. And I was like, yeah, sure, no problem. So I stopped what I was doing and went in ZBrush and kind of figured it out. And um, and then, and it's cool because it's like this purple ship or whatever, spaceship, all these weird lines. 
And so I threw on a material that was like this metallic purple material and, uh, and, and looked at what they gave me and lined it up perfectly and did a render and gave it back to them as just like a flat white one and then one that was in color with material and gave it back to them. Blew their mind because I was able to do this in like an hour, right? Wow. Um, yeah, like super fast. So I gave it to them, looked like the hero, um, gave it to the artist, and he was able to knock this thing out in, you know, in no time at all. So that's why these hmm. – I think the reason that the – and not to be on like some, you know, rah-rah salesman thing, but the reason why – I think ZBrush is blowing up with the industry uh, cats like, you know, video games and movies and all that is because you and I know like this thing that we were working on together, mm -hmm. um, we had to present stages of it and it, you know, they're like, okay, well we need to know what she's going to look like. And, and for something where it, it doesn't exist, we have a, 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 a video capture of a, 480 YouTube screen grab from 1980 something. Yeah. Uh, and, and we're you trying to You can't see make any it. of the features at all. It's Nothing. like all blurred and Oh god. That was yeah. a so so the great thing about the great thing about this is if I if I do a even just like a really rudimentary sketch of um of the person in ZBrush and what I can do is I can take it and light it dynamically, angle it I just did this for something for like a Power Rangers, right? So I do this Ranger, and rather than doing the drawing, submitting the drawing to the client, letting them sign off on that, um, and get back to me, and then doing the color block and all that stuff, and then taking a chance that after all that time and effort, that it's not right. Yeah, I I did the same deal where I I kind of blocked it out in ZBrush, real rough, um, angled it the way that I wanted to put on some pretty cool lighting, sent it to the client. They were like, oh, that's cool, but can you rotate it a little bit to the left? And uh, and I said, sure. So I did that, sent it back to them. They liked it. I sculpted in like wrinkles for the clothes and the gear and all that other stuff. I spent a good two days doing that, right? If I have a, like I, I had a, a week budget of time to spend on this thing. Mm -hmm. And I was like, all right, well, I'm going to, let me just see if this is a good workflow. You know, I'll, I'll spend two days sculpting and then uh, and then get into the paint. Dude, the paint moves so fast. Yeah. It was like I it was like I had the Power Ranger come in my studio. Yeah. You know, had the studio lights, lit him, shot him, and and was able to use that as reference. Dude, I'm sold. <laughs> <laughs> That's this sounds awesome. Um so here's another question. Uh, so does ZBrush supply like human anatomy and stuff? that you can use as a foundation and you can like add to it. Like for example, like eyes or anything like that, that you can just put Absolutely. and then you can like mess with the eyes and to make them look like someone else's eyes or. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so it comes with a, a bunch of base models, like base meshes is what they call them. And there's uh, you know, there's, there's bodies in there. Um, there's animals in there and whatever you can't find. Like I did a piece for, um, <laughs> I did a piece for Upper Deck. I had to do. We were doing these um, Ultimate uh, X Men cards, uh, Spider Man too, and I had to do this uh, this uh, anti venom, and I wanted to have him in a section of subway train. Um, so what I did was I was like, all right, well I can sculpt the venom all day long, but I'm not good at hard surface stuff, and I really don't feel like sculpting a subway train. So I think I went on to like Turbo Squid, and I bought a section of a train. Um, kind of took out the, 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 chairs that didn't make sense to me. I wanted it to look like, I mean, you've lived in New York for a while, you know what it looks like. So I wanted it to look like those, those seats. Um, uh, so I, uh, you were in New York for a while, weren't you? No, Chicago. I, I'm in Chicago. Yeah. But I've been to New York okay, a lot. Okay. So. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I don't know why I My just agent is I, in New York. Got you. Got you. So I fixed the train and, um, uh, what was I going to say? Uh, put the guy in there and lit it uh, with this crazy dramatic lighting and use that as my as my uh you know as as my reference and i was able to paint this thing and kill it you know like if i had to figure out lighting for the way that the uh, you know how everything falls off the the inside of this subway train 
plus in addition to like I wanted those panels that come on the uh, you know where they have the advertisements on yeah. the top of the yeah okay I wanted the light to come from there plus the center light and then he has this weird kind of uh you know the, the inside of his mouth is glowing or whatever and so it's just stuff that could I figure it out on my own sure but hmm. did I have that amount of time I really didn't you know so crazy so you can actually buy digital like images of like, like like trains and different things and then yeah and then you can put it and you can light it how you want and everything like mm-hmm. man this is crazy i feel like i feel like i'm like rockwell or something like i'm in the past <laughs> yeah well no i mean it, i'm like and, and, i'm like dr- drawing and painting everything with like i it's funny because um i i've you know, I'm not saying it's cheating. I think that's a, that's brilliant, especially when you're doing like digital work with like crazy deadlines. Yeah. But what, what I like about this whole thing, like for me, like I'm thinking about like my kind of illustration, what I do, mm-hmm. um, not necessarily the portrait work, but when I have to do certain caricature things mm-hmm. and come up with different lightings, like that would be so helpful. Um, man, mm-hmm. I, I, my mind's spinning right now. <laughs> and that's the thing, like, uh, I'm, I'm in a very similar situation to you. Um, you know, when it comes to projects, you know, with being a freelancer, you very rarely have the option of saying, well, I'm going to pass on that. I'm kind of busy, you know, for me anyway, mm-hmm. uh, if, if I can figure out a way to make it happen, if I have to, you know, pull an all nighter or two, three or whatever to, to make it happen, I will. Yeah. Um, but Anything that will help us shave off valuable minutes. Oh, totally, is, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I mean, it's it's funny. I mean, I mean, the, the the more I do this, the more I, um, I've been doing it long enough that I like the cover I just did. I had to just a lot of it just made up. It was just three people posed together, and, and it's a really funny, kind of goofy thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I used to use so much more reference. Where now it's just like. I, I've done I've drawn this kind of a thing so many times already. So you know you start to kind of build up a library in your head, yeah. in a way. But also when you when you're working on such crazy deadlines, um, it's you know in mine mine this this one's it's it's caricature and more humorous. So it doesn't have to be there's a lot more freedom there to kind of you know it doesn't have to be exactly like perfect anatomy or anything. Like you can you have more freedom to to be funny and stuff. Sure. Um. Um. So, but uh. You know, speaking of, I want to. I'm going to um, share my screen real quick because I want to. Uh, there's a couple pieces of yours I just wanted to talk about. Um, okay. So this this is one of my favorite pieces uh, of yours, just because it's so crazy. And when I first saw this, I was like, "How the hell did he do this?" Because Thanks, uh, first of all, what what was this for? This was uh, one of those. All right. So the with Marvel. A lot of times what will happen is a movie will be coming out and they'll want assets that they can use for packaging or point of sale, that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So um, Civil War was was coming out. I had done uh, some Black Panther stuff for them and um, and they said, we want you to do this crazy team battle shot. Right. And I to this point, I hadn't done anything kind of this outrageous. Um, but I always had been a fan of, I don't know if you used to watch back in the day, the old, uh, X-Men, uh, cartoon, like in the eighties or whatever, nineties, whatever it was. Uh, I know. I don't know. <laughs> okay. Um, so anyway, they would have a scene at the beginning where they're, they're the, the good guys and the bad guys are running at each other and then they kind of freeze frame it right when they're about to like oh, clash. Yes. I do remember that actually. Yeah. 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 And it's a, and it's a nice shot, this kind of perspective where you're looking at them lined up there. Um, and I always, that stuck in my head. I always loved it. And so when they asked me to do this, I was like, hell yeah, man. Um, now the one thing that kind of worried me about it was, you know, I, I, I hadn't done anything like this. I I didn't want it to feel like, um, a bunch of, you know, color forms where you had, you know, here's this guy stuck on top of this guy, stuck on top of this guy. I wanted to feel like it might have been an actual kind of a snapshot of something that's about to go down. Yeah. Um, so for this particular job, I worked in a way that I don't normally work, um, which was I, I, um, I worked in grayscale and then painted my colors on layers and then did compositing of colors to build up this. Mm. So, 
the only reason I worked that way was because I needed to do it really quickly. And I knew it would be easier to do a value study of all these guys first yeah. and then work up the details than, than to try to, you know, figure out, oh, well, what reds am I going to use for Iron Man suit as I'm painting it, you mm-hmm. know? Yeah, totally. Uh, yeah. So that was the thing. They gave me a bunch of uh, set photos of, uh, you know, of the characters. Um, and then they gave me this really rough, um, uh, it was, uh, what was it? So these costumes hadn't been really revealed, revealed yet, but they gave me some, some concept art of the costumes. And then I had to go in and, uh, and pencil these guys. So I did like sketches or whatever, you know, of all the poses and everything and gave it to them and, um, and worked it up and it just, you know just happened to work out for me. So it's crazy because to me, this one almost, I, I, you know, I imagined when I first saw it that this was partially a ZBrush, but this is all just like uh, yeah, regular. Yeah, I, I, I didn't have time. I planned to use ZBrush to help me on something. Like this would have been great to help me figure out um, some of the stuff in here. But it the turn time was so hectic and I wasn't really – as adept as I am at, or, or have the confidence honestly that I have in ZBrush yet. So it was just easier for me to go in and without anything kind of just, uh, figure out the lighting, yeah. you know? Uh, and there's places like if you were to break this down, there's places where it doesn't make sense. I, 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 I love to go into my stuff long after I put it down and kind of, uh, you know, just look at all the places where I could have done better or places, oh, yeah. you know. Oh, yeah. I yeah. mean, that that happens with almost everything that I do. <laughs> yeah. It's yeah, like yeah. when you, you don't have much time, you just got to get the job done. And you, you I mean, it's, yeah. it's funny. I used to look at other people's art and be like, oh, man, look, at this is messed up and whatever. I could do better than that. Mm-hmm. You know, and then I start realizing once I get, started getting into it, like, oh, shit's hard. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. like the deadlines are crazy and stuff and yeah um so uh um this was another one so i wanted to ask you but i think you kind of already answered this so you do uh this is is this for our toy packaging this was a test oh, okay and i don't normally do tests at this point in my life you know like i've been doing it long enough that i i i kind of don't get approached to do tests but this was my this is I had done Guardians of the Galaxy for Marvel before that, but when they announced Black Panther, I was like, dude, you got to put me down. So they're like, okay, well, here's kind of the idea that we want done. Can you give us something just to show us what you would do with it? And so this is uh, this is what I had done. Um, and this is before they showed – this was months before the movie came out, so you only knew that uh, – um, you know who the actor was going to be, and and I think they had, um, they had uh, one small little photo of what the suit was going to look like. Um, oh. So I had to figure out a lot of these. It's one of those things where you know if you look at the suit now, you probably could go in and and be like, man, his lines are crazy. That's not exactly what it looks like. But yeah. I didn't have anything to go by at the time. Hmm. That's interesting. Cool. Yeah, I was just curious, like. Um... That's pretty. It's it's pretty cool to like. I mean, what what this was a test for, uh, to to get to get the job for um the one that you just looked at the Civil War. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Now okay. for this for this particular piece on uh, just to <clears throat> to give you an idea. So this one I actually because it was a single and I had more time to do it. I actually did use ZBrush to uh to figure out the pose on this guy mm-hmm. and then to light him. So you know. The, imagine none of the detail on the face because it was just I think I pulled out some ears on the guy and had a flat face or whatever but it helped me to kind of uh, to get the values and everything that I need and rotate it to the optimal angle that's the other thing about using ZBrush for paintings you know it's you go in you you kind of figure out the what you want to have as far as the composition of your piece and you know after doing maybe a few sketches um and and maybe a tight pencil and you go for it right and when you're done you can look at it and say okay i like this because this 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 and this however i wish i had kind of had more of a dynamic angle like maybe if it was 
turned up a little bit, it would have been awesome. Or if the light was a little more yeah. behind them, you know, so these are things that you deal with all the time doing, you know, doing your, 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 um, caricatures and portraits and stuff like that. And I was like, man, um, I was by taking this guy that I had as a, you know, as an avatar that I had sculpted and being able to just keep moving them around until I find something that I like. Cause it takes no, you're, you're spending no time, no effort rotating them around after you have the sculpt. Right. Yeah. And then you're, you're, you're spending less time moving your little lighting thing on the sphere to figure out, okay, I'm going to get a really hot rim on his shoulders and it's going to look really cool. You know what I mean? So I would do that. Um, and, uh, and I could show that to the client. Whereas, you know, if I'm giving them a sketch, they don't know, you know, they don't know what the end product is going to look like. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's awesome. That's I did cool. have it. I, I found a little kind of reverse kind of discrimination on that process from this, uh, the, I'm, I had mentioned the, the superhero cards, um, you know, uh, when I did that for them, I was working on a um, juggernaut, I think. And I did a sculpt of him that I just repurposed one of my old Hulk sculpts and put the I, I made the dome helmet for him and everything. Oh. Gave it to the client and everything. I was like, really feeling myself like I was like, yeah, this took me no time. And and I killed it and they're going to love this. And I gave it to them and they were like, yeah, can you give us a pencil drawing? I was like, what? They said, um, the, they're used to dealing with comic book artists and, you know, they're not used to this level of, uh, of technology. <laughs> I was like, okay. So I just took my thing and traced it real quick and gave it. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah. Let's go with that. That's funny. <laughs> Jeez. Um, oh, let's see. I have, uh, there's a couple more that I want. Like this one's awesome, man. That was fun. Yeah. That was can so you, fun. Can you talk about this dude. one a little bit. Like this is, this looks like a fun. Now, like for this one, did they, they did give you a bunch of references to work from. Um, I, they did uh, that one again. I got set photos um, every once in a while. Uh, uh, you know, with this particular company, this is that movie company I was talking about before, and um, they do a lot of. Uh, it's not a movie company. It's a it's a agency that does a lot of movie work. So yeah. they had all of these. Uh, you know, uh, like like set photos of all the characters and everything and gave them to me and I could pick and choose what I wanted to do. Um, I mentioned earlier, I'm a giant Struzan head. And yeah. so I, I just bought his, um, his book, which I can never remember the name of it, but it's like a compilation of everything of his. And I said, you know, I definitely want to do something like that. Um, so figured out the layout kind of based on the layout that he uses kind of time and time again to tell the story of the movie. Mm hmm. And um, this is using Painter. And I think this is one of the first times that I went in on top of my uh, block in and just did a lot of hatching with color pencils. Like if you were to zoom in on the character's face like Key and Peel, it, it, it's a, it's a, it looks tight from far away, but closer, it's, it's a little more loose and there's much more kind of hatch type style oh, okay. going on. That's, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's but cool. Yeah, that's, that was a blast. Looks they like didn't use that, one. by the way. Yeah, Never got used. But I know it's there. It's too bad, man. I, I, that's. I mean, I grew up in the '80s, and uh, the like, so like you said, like the movie posters that are painted are the best. It's, you know, yeah. Um, this was another one that I just thought was pretty cool, and I was just curious about, about the the technique on this one. So it seems like a lot of uh, uh, some serious. Uh, hours into this one render wise because they that wanted was. it obviously like super real yeah um but uh yeah, that, what, was this like another like mock possible mock poster that's exactly what it was oh. so the, the the this is another one where they gave me they gave me some really good reference on this one by the way i had um it was great because all the characters had uh i had a contact sheet for all of them so like you know, they were doing the complete turnaround and and all this other stuff for all the suits and 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 it was just like tons and tons of images of these guys. This was, uh, you know, they introduced a lot of these characters um, in this film, 
So being able to see what that archangel, you know, suit looked like in three dimensions, you know, from rotating the, the you know, the different uh, the camera angles. Yeah. Um, it helped me out a ton. And again, this is one of those ones where short turn time. I mean, I'm used to doing stuff in, in a week, maybe two weeks if I'm really lucky. Um, but because of that and because it's a similar kind of a deal to the civil war piece i think they saw that piece and wanted me to do something like it Mm -hmm. um i i approached the same way did the grayscale um went in built my colors up on top of it and kind of got you know the the rich blues that are in beast space and apocalypse and all that kind of stuff so that's um, awesome yeah that's really cool man thanks brother yeah there's there's a um a lot of I mean, anybody that's listening to this, uh, definitely check out Mike's website because there's a, there's a lot of pretty cool stuff on there. Thanks, man. Um, yeah, so that's really cool, man. Um, so uh, I have a bunch of questions. Well, not a bunch, but I got a few questions from fans. Um, okay. And so I wanted to go through a couple of those um, before I show you some fan art and everything. Okay. Um, but uh, so this is uh, um, a person... Let's see. The first one is by Julia Wolf. Mm-hmm. Um, she says, "Please tell Mike that I love his work, 2D and 3D, and that I'm incredibly grateful for him to um, to him for showing how he includes 3D into his illustrations. Too often, that kind of thing is considered cheating. I think people who say that have never used a 3D modeling or sculpting program. It's a whole different skill uh, skill set. Using 3D certainly makes things a lot easier, but it's still a lot of work." Um, okay, sometimes it's just pulling up some boxes for perspective reference, but still. Uh, let's see. Anyway, for that alone, Mike is my superhero, and he's also a fantastic <laughs> artist. Um, I you. used one of his sculpts for my sketch of Mike, um, but usually I make my own models. Let's see. Uh, where's the question, Julia? I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, okay, here's the... So, uh, she said, if Mike wants to critique my sketch, I've noticed some of your guests do that. Um he should feel free to say whatever he thinks. Um, so there's no real question here. This is just her saying you're awesome. That's cool. That's that's <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Julia, for the uh, for the support. And I think, if I remember correctly, I think she did like an incredible Hulk version of you. Oh, and I man. think she based it off your sculpt. So, um, so here's a question. This is by Andrew okay. Ellis. Have you met any of the celebrities you've painted? Um, and did any of them give you a personal critique of the painting that you did of them? I did. I I actually, so when I got into, I guess, uh, getting paid uh, to be an artist, um, I was working for a company, a clothing company out of uh, New Jersey at the time, a young men's brand uh, called Echo Unlimited. And um, uh, I used to run their t-shirt department. I've been doing t-shirts forever. That's how I kind of broke in. But we, uh, they decided they were going to do a... uh, their advertisement campaign was taking hip hop uh, artists and putting them in their clo- in the clothing, and they thought it would be really cool to have them standing next to a series of paintings of themselves um, wearing, you know, them wearing the clothes and then standing next to the painting like a gallery type piece. Mm. So they had me do it. Um, it's funny because this was one of those things where I. I, you know, we talk about things that are, you know, quote unquote cheating or or whatever the case may be. But this is one of those things where I was using Photoshop and I was painting, um, I don't know who it was, one of these guys. But I spent so much time just noodling and noodling and zooming in and getting super close and getting all this detail that when I was done um, and showed it to uh, showed it to my art director, he was like, yeah, that looks cool, man. He goes, um, what filter did you use? And it just completely deflated everything I had done because I spent all these hours painting, painting, painting. Yeah. And they thought that I just used a Photoshop filter. So I was like, I got to rethink this. Cause that was the defining moment in my career where I was like, this sucks. I'm not going to, I'm not going to do this again. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I can relate that that does suck when people, they don't get it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people uh, thought my Pope cover was a photo, and I'm like, D- I don't understand that because if you actually if you actually see a close up of it, mm-hmm. it's actually pretty loose. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And I didn't well, have much time, that, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's one of those things where they, you know, from 
at a quick glance, they don't know. And because you're inundated with so many photographs on everything that yeah. you're just used to, oh, well, that's just a photograph. But anyway, um, meeting people. So, yeah, at the time, we were doing everybody that was hot at the moment. So I got to, you know, hang out with Method Man and Most Def and all these guys. Um, I think the coolest uh, I love Most thing, Def. Yeah, yeah, he's awesome, dude. So the one of the coolest things uh, as far as people that I meet who I've painted who critique my work is um, I was fortunate enough to be in a Coca-Cola commercial back in 2003 where um, it's on my site. It's funny. My wife used to make fun of me that I never looked that hard a day in my life. They, they, <laughs> they, the whole the whole the, the, the idea was they put me in Timberlands and, you know, dirty jeans and, you know, the scully tip to the side and everything. And the idea was um, I'm in my loft in Brooklyn and I'm painting and you don't know what I'm painting, but then they zoom back and you see that it's uh, like Angie Stone and the roots and, and, you know, music and like all these people are behind me and they walk up and they're looking at the painting over my shoulder and I drink a Coke and it's like, oh man, you're the man. Dope commercial, right? <laughs> That's came, awesome. It came on at like, it, unfortunately it came out the same time as the common um, Maya commercial came out. Mm. It was a part of a series. So Common and Maya's on prime time every day. Mine is on at like 2.30 in the morning after perspectives on like BET or whatever. So I don't know how many people saw it. But um, uh, the, the, I met Scratch from The Roots, who was their DJ. And this dude was a fan. He was like, man, I collect your stuff and this, that, and the other. And I'm like, what? Are you kidding me? Like, I'm the yeah, biggest Roots awesome. fan ever. Yeah. yeah so. Oh, they're amazing. Oh my God. Yeah. So, uh, in fact, I had funny story when I was shooting that commercial, I met quest and, uh, I took a picture with him. It, it, if anybody ever wants to blackmail me, find this picture because I have this smile. That's the <laughs> biggest smile ever. And the look on his face, he's looking at me like, like, you know, who is this guy? You know, but, That's pretty cool, yeah. man. Yeah, it was fun. Dude. That's awesome. Uh, let's see. Um, mm -hmm. So there's a question from Hunter Campbell it says, um, how do you go from a studio artist, caricatures, portraits, painting, graphic design, mostly for fun, but several commissions mixed in into working for publishers, magazines, or companies such as Marvel or Nike? Um, if it is submitting a portfolio, what are the strengths and areas in your work that agents look for? Okay. Okay. So, um, that one is, uh, that's, uh, that's pretty easy for me because I, I found myself in that situation where I was working with that, uh, the company I mentioned earlier and I knew I wanted to, to be an illustrator. Um, at the time I was a staff artist, uh, and I wanted to strike out on my own. So I took, uh, the pieces that I had done for that campaign and uh, I went around, I just spent a day in New York and Manhattan, just going from publisher to publisher. Um, I found the guys that were doing like Vibe and Double and XL and King and anywhere where I felt like my work would fit there. Uh, and I just kind of bogarted meetings with them, you know, uh, and I met the creative directors and sat down with them and showed them my stuff. And um, they were like, okay, well, this is great. And they took my name down and they're like, we'll call you. And I would get little, you know, spot illustrations in, in vibe magazine or whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was, the great thing about that is I was able to do it while I continued working at, uh, you know, at the clothing company, it didn't take a whole lot of time. I could usually do it on a weekend. And, um, the spot illustrations turned into, you know, full on, you know, editorial illustrations and page. And then I would do double pages and, um, and it was, it was dope because as I was doing those, I was getting my name out there and building up my portfolio yeah. and, and then I was able to take that. Um, and I think that, uh, a company, it was, uh, Burrell communications out of Chicago, um, contacted me. One of the guys there, the, uh, the AD had seen, my uh had seen the echo work that i that i painted and was like we want to do something similar for a coca-cola campaign and that's where that coke commercial came from mm. so i got that that was my first giant client 
And um, I mean, for somebody who had just been doing magazine stuff, that blew my mind. Yeah. Uh, but then having them uh, led to, you know, getting other, you know, other clients. And, and I did an Infinity Motors thing that was a profile on. Uh, they have this every year they profile um, African-American creatives. So they got me, they got a, they got a, a musician, um, they got a film director and all this other stuff. And what they did was they were like, this was a cool project. They gave us all a car to drive for a week. And they were like, we want you to create an original piece in your medium based on how this car makes you feel. Mm. So I got like the Q45 and I'm driving it around and I'm like, this is dope. <laughs> you know, I'm I, at That's the time, awesome. I'm a, dude, I was like, <clears throat> okay, so I'm a, I'm a pretty young dude at the time driving this car around luxury car. Um, and, uh, and and then I painted this piece that was kind of based off of it. That was really kind of like highbrow. I thought at the time I was kind of you know, up my own ass about it, but it was they loved it. You know, I sold them the dream, and they were yeah. like, "Yeah, man." And then uh, they filmed it. So I'm sitting there, and I, oh, I'm Mike Thompson. I drove this car, and uh, this is how I feel on this car, and <laughs> you know, just totally bougie. But they 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 ate it up, and that led to more clients and, and all this other stuff. Yeah, man. That's awesome. That's cool, man. I gotta, I gotta figure something out like that with a Jaguar. I know, right? I didn't get to keep the car. <laughs> I was bummed I didn't get to keep the car, but I did. I did get paid, and I bought my own car. So I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> cool. Well, that was actually the last question. So, um, uh, but before we continue, I'd like to make a special announcement to anyone out there listening. So listen up. Uh, the first person to subscribe to my YouTube channel and answer this question correctly will win one free year of sub subscription to the Adobe Creative Cloud. So you'll have to listen to this um, to the right podcast to get the answer to this question. So the question is, what brand of paint and color or paint does Aaliyah Chapin use for blocking in her underpaintings? So if you, if you know the answer, you're the first one. Uh, leave your answer in the comments under this video on YouTube and email me at face the truth podcast at gmail.com. So there you go. Good luck. <laughs> nice. So, um, uh, so yeah, that's, that's man. It's, it's really cool. I, what I, what, what's awesome about what you do is you've, you know, I, I, I'd love to talk to you about more of this at some other point too, but it's, um, you know, it's cool the, how much you've branched out from, you know, just like the magazine stuff to doing all kinds of different things. Cause, um, I've, I've, I've dabbled in that as well. I'd like to get more into it. Like I did some, um, uh, movie posters for Shit's Creek last year and that mm -hmm. was so much fun to do. Um, yeah. and I was so excited cause I'm, um, I thought I did a, you know, they really loved it and I'm like, this is awesome. Maybe it's going to blast open the door to Netflix and I'll start getting some Netflix illustrations. Cause I know you've mm -hmm. done some, you did that Margaret, my, wait, wait, who was it? Um, uh, it? Uh, Ali Wong. Ali Wong. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Like that. I, I noticed that one right away. Um, as, and you know, I was like, I've seen a bunch of these illustrations, you know, like, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. on Netflix and I'm like, Hey, Netflix. Woo -hoo. <laughs> I, I draw pictures yeah. too. Yeah, uh, yeah. so, but yeah, I definitely want to get more into that kind of stuff. Cause I had a blast, um, doing that. Um, and I've, I've dabbled into some character design for some film stuff, um, mm -hmm. which is fun. Um, uh, but it's, it's so much fun as an artist to, to be able to branch out and do, you know, I love doing editorial illustration work. I love doing caricature work, um, yeah. covers and spot illustrations and stuff like that. But every once in a while getting something that is, you know, like right now I'm, I'm, I'm starting, a, um, a, uh, Broadway play, t um, poster. And, nice. uh, that's, it's, you know, in this particular piece, I get to be very conceptual. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, it's, it's fun. Cause it's, it's a completely different approach from, you know, a different, different, um, you know, I'm still using the same tools, still drawing, mm -hmm. still painting, but like yeah. I get to kind of just go outside the box and just create something that's cool, you know? Um, and I, and I kind of went pretty conceptual at first and I, I sent the sketch and I was surprised by the art director. I, I mean, I was nervous, I should say, mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I, I think, I don't know if they're going to dig this, you know, because um, I had to read the play, which okay. was the script. They sent me the script and they, they basically said that they had no idea what they wanted 
Mm-hmm. Um, and they, they said, well, we have this general idea. And it was like, it didn't make sense to me. I started reading the play and I was like, man, the, this, the, the, the initial thing that they said is nothing like what's going on in my head. Sure. From when, from when I'm reading this. So I just kind of went for this idea because mm-hmm. she said that it's, it'd be great if you could be conceptual with it. So some, some, that just kind of stuck with me. And so I kind of just created this, uh, this, uh, interesting image um so i when i heard back from them they're like oh this is this is actually awesome we really, you know um they just said, like can you make it a little bit more colorful and yeah because uh, my initial idea was kind of darker and stuff but so i'm, I'm excited about it <laughs> this is like a fun dope, man. because like not every you know like it, it's it's kind of rare sometimes to get a job i think where you're just like oh this is the coolest thing in the world yeah. you know where you because a lot of times i don't feel like i'm getting to be super creative, you know, if, mm-hmm. you know, cause you know, when you work in il- illustration and editorial, um, you know, I do have fun, but the art directors and the edit, most of the time the editors are like, you know, whatever they say, you know, you got to do it. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. um, I don't know. That's the thing it's for fun. us, man. It's, it's, it's one of those things where I, I, I like to relate things. I like, I've watched way too many movies in yeah. my life. Like I'm the first one to admit that. And, and, <laughs> I, I can generally relate things to either the matrix or, you know, like interview with a vampire. So I, I feel like for, for us, <laughs> yeah. we're, we're, we're kind of like Lestat and, you know, you, yeah. you live long enough, you just get bored with every damn thing. So yeah. you gotta, you know, you gotta learn different <laughs> things. So that, that's why I'm always grinding it, you know, okay, I want to learn how to sculpt in ZBrush or I want to do this thing or the other thing, because it's great to get paid. Don't get me wrong, you know, um, and, and, more often than not, we're we're kind of in a time to make the donuts type of a phase. You yeah. know, it's like get up, rinse, repeat, do the same thing, mm-hmm. and do your illustration. Yeah. And when you get that job, like I did a um, I did. This is so crazy because it's so it's so juvenile, man. But it was it was fun to do, and it's something that is totally out of my wheelhouse. But I did uh the the artwork for um a Lego justice league movie oh that's awesome and 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 i mean you've seen the style they want it to look like the legos right yeah so um i had to do like batman and you know wonder woman and all that stuff and then there's a giant uh dark side you know lego head behind them and and that was one of those things where it was just like you've seen my work it doesn't look like freaking legos but yeah. i was like all right i gotta do this whimsical type of thing <laughs> and it was just different yeah. You know? So every once in a while, when you get to do something that is not what you normally do, yeah, it's freaking awesome, dude. Yeah, it's fun. It it, it and it gives you like a like an energy, you know. Um, like I, the thing that I got really excited about recently was the the last cover I did for Time was mm-hmm. that I've um I've I've only had one cover published for Time, mm-hmm. um, and it's always been for Person of the Year, um, but they've I usually get asked. Like I've gotten asked like at least seven times to do person of the year. That's um, awesome. But it only, only one of them actually made it. And then mm-hmm. a few of them end up inside the magazine. Like, like, you know, cause the thing is, is they don't know who's going to be on, you know, who's actually going to win. So okay. they'll, they'll actually hire several artists to paint the same person sometimes. Okay. So even okay. though you're painting the person of the year cover, that person might not get chosen. Mm-hmm. And there might be another artist that's painting the same thing. So you're basically trying to, to wow them with the, the best painting. And sure. Um, so it's kind of a weird feeling. You know, you don't know if it's really going to get published or not. Um, and and then I've been asked a, a few times to do covers that aren't for person of the year, just a regular time cover. Yeah. And then um, the news cycle changed. Oh. And, and, all, and, and then they, they like, for example, I did I did one cover of, of Trump. Um, and, and all realistic. They, you know, they they have never had me do caricature. So, mm-hmm. um, I did this Trump cover that, excuse me, I really really like. I'm very proud of it. It's one of my best covers I've ever done. I was like, I'm gonna submit this to Society of Illustrators. This is gonna probably win an award. You know, I was like yeah. really pumped about it. Like this is gonna be great for my career. This cover is yeah. awesome. Mm-hmm. I put everything into it. Um. And I was excited because Trump's going to see this and he's going to get pissed off. And like, you know, <laughs> like I was like, this is going to be so cool. Right. Well, uh, sorry, Jace, you know, everyone loves this, but you know, it, 
the news cycle has changed, but we're going to, we will use this at some point, but it's yeah. been like two and a half, three years now. And I'm like, mm. Oh, and, and, and I can't, <laughs> and I can't, I can't submit it to any shows. Oh um, man. You know, I can't yeah. show it, but you know, so it's, it's, it's a bummer sometimes, but yeah. Uh, but then this last um, cover that I did, what excites me about it so much is, you know, part of the reason I got into the, the I, caricature is like my passion. I love doing caricature. Um, mm -hmm. And the, the first, you know, like, like just like the like CF Payne and um, Roberto Prada and, you know, some of these guys that were doing um, time cover caricatures, you know. Right. Um, right. And Thomas Fluharty and stuff like that. So I was like, you know, it's, it was as a kid, I was like, one day I want to do that. One day I want mm -hmm. a caricature cover or like Rolling Stone cover, you know. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. And so, you know, I, even though the Pope was a great thing um, and it was great exposure and everything. Um, the, the last cover I did with Donald Trump um, as a caricature and it was Pelosi and them they're you know f f shooting tweets and um, yeah. things at each other um, meant so much more to me just because they asked me to do a caricature cover on Time nice. Magazine you know yeah. what I mean like yeah. and so never was I so pumped in my life I was like I, I couldn't wait to like I mean I had a few days to work on it so I'd get in the studio I'm like all day I'm just like I have the best job in the world. I'm do I'm painting a caricature of Donald Trump on the cover of Time magazine. This is so, so awesome. You know he would have responded too. That would have been the thing. Oh yeah, because you would you would have easily you, been in his tweet cycle, oh, man. He, you know he saw it. No, the, the, this one was published, so it came out. Uh, oh okay. Yeah, it came out a couple weeks or a couple months ago. Well, and, what's uh, the one they're holding? That's that's the realistic one. Yeah, the realistic one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah but the the one I did was. Uh, Trump and Pelosi like in a battle with each other like he's on a wall war. sitting on a wall shooting tweets and she's um, got a catapult shooting um, I can't remember what they were like uh, legal papers or something I can't remember exactly <laughs> what it was um, but it was it, that, that's what's exciting is you know Trump's gonna see it you know Absolutely. and uh, Pelosi's gonna see it but yeah. it, what was fun is that they trusted me enough and wanted to have fun to do a caricature cover because time doesn't do caricature covers hardly anymore at all. Right. Like it's really right. rare. So um, it's exciting. And I hope, I hope that opens the door for more, you know, because I think it's so much fun. That's it. And when we live in this political age that we're living in right now, where, I mean, it's like, I, it's like living on a Saturday night live skit. Yeah. Um, caricature is perfect right now it should be everywhere <laughs> yeah you know and it should be well, ridiculous dude, it should be it should be like like literally crossing lines and making people yeah. like whoa you know this is the perfect time to to just like be you know smacking them out of the park <laughs> i think the first thing that i i had said like i love all of your your political stuff man like a lot and i remember we had our our phone conversation i i think i I don't know what it was, man, but I, I think I re reached out to you. I saw one. And I was just like, dude, this is freaking primo, man. And I knew you hit me back and we talked on the phone. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, I just I got to tell you, man, like I get jealous at this one thing. Like you're not supposed to be like everybody's doing their own thing and everything. <laughs> I was always jealous at the fact that you do the most amazing Obama that I've ever seen. Like you've had him looking <laughs> so many different ways, like in caricatures. Yeah, <laughs> it's crazy to me because, like, if I was going to do a caricature, it would look like this, and that would be what it was. You have like these nuanced pictures of Obama where <laughs> you'll play up something one way one time, and then play up something the other. Way. And I would just look at these things, and I'm like, "This dude is <laughs> pissing me off right now," because it looked like you were just. It was like, uh, okay, I'm going to eat a sandwich and I'm going to make the most ill Obama illustration that you've ever seen. <laughs> but, well, you want to know what's funny is, is so I, I do it now with Trump whenever I can, but yeah. I haven't, I've only done a handful of Trump since he's been elected, which is kind of weird. I don't, I don't get it. People are afraid right now. Everyone's walking on eggshells, but. Um, I just knew your career was going to go crazy when he got the presidency. I'm like, man, you, you're not going to be able to have well, anything that's what, else. That, but it hasn't been. <laughs> wow. It's it's like it's it's crazy. I was the only thing I was excited about when he became president was like, oh, I'm going to be so busy. And yeah. it's like it's been like, no, it's 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 kind of like the opposite. <laughs> like it's weird. But yeah. um, so with Obama, I I I don't know how many Obamas I've done. It's it's a lot, and yeah. I I made it like I made a decision with myself like, like to, 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 I decided basically that um, because I'm going to be painting this person over and over and over again, 
Mm-hmm. Um, I want to, I'm not, okay. I'm not going to name names, but there's certain illustrators out there that when Bush was president, it looked like they were just doing the same Bush over and over and over again. Like yeah. they were, they were, they got, they did covers on a regular basis and it just always was, you know, it was good, but yeah. I'm the kind of person that's like, I want, I want to do like, I want to, I want, I want to basically make people laugh. I want mm-hmm. them to also be blown away by it, but but I want like okay, you saw what I did with Obama, okay. Next week I do a, a different cover and I take Obama to a completely different place. Yeah. I push him a completely different way. I exaggerate, um, and that was basically what I was trying to do: was outdo the one before, do something different and interesting, try to push the expression um, yeah. as much as possible because you know it's it's like. It's basically like, how much can I stretch this putty, you know, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. see what I can do. And the funny thing about Obama is I got to a certain point where, um, I know this sounds really weird. This, this I don't do this with every person. Um, but like, like for example, when I, when, when I think of Trump, I think of he, like kind of like a, a toad or something mm-hmm. like, just like mm-hmm. he's got this look, mm-hmm. you know, like <laughs> toady fish, you know? Right, right. And, and with Obama, he's always like, uh, uh, look, uh, look, you know, he's like, yeah, you know, like Michelle, uh, where's my cigarettes, you know? <laughs> and, um, uh, and he, to me, he has this long face yeah, with these big eyes and these ears. Mm-hmm. And I was like, he looks like a deer to me. He looks like, <laughs> he looks like a, like a doe, you know, like right. he's got this like long, like slender face you mm-hmm. know how does have like this long like real slender almost smooth face sure but the ears come out and i'm like he's he looks like a deer and yeah. what, somehow when that clicked in i was like i was able in, in my mind to kind of turn him certain ways and do different things because i was thinking about this like like i don't know it's kind of a weird way to think about it but um i, I do that with some people where i'm like oh this person reminds me of a camel yeah and then like I don't know why, but then I think about that when I draw and it just makes it way better. You know, like yeah, Nick Winehouse yeah. looks like yeah. a horse. So like, <laughs> I just think about a horse when I draw her, you know what I mean? <laughs> Dude, that, that shit is so interesting to me. Like I never, like I always wondered how you guys do what you do. Like I, I, I do a little caricature from time to time, but like for people who are masters at it to, to hear the thought process, like I never thought about it like that, you know, <laughs> like that, that's crazy to me. And I, I know what what you're saying about trying to push yourself every time. Yeah, that's fantastic. And I don't hear enough people saying that. And I see people who are successful artists who you know they they they're resting on their laurels and they're doing a like here's a design. I'm going to repeat this because this is what the fans want. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you look at their portfolio and it's stagnant as hell. Right yeah. or yeah. Or someone like you know, um, and I mean his his stuff is his stuff is cool, but it's he's not reinventing the wheel. Somebody like a Shepard Fairey, right? Who, you know, he came out with the Obey line. It was fresh. He applied it to everything. He applied it to Obama, and then he really blew up. And you look at his stuff, and it's there was a time when Shepard Fairey was the face of hip hop. And I'm just looking at it like here's this 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 guy who is a, a great graphic designer, uh, you know, and uh, but this is not to me anyway, and this is not hate. This is there's so many nuanced levels of of different type of art that could be considered hip hop, and this is a it's a it's a great piece of art, but I don't think that this guy is speaking for an entire genre of artwork. Yeah, um, you know what I mean. So. That's the thing. Like when it comes to my uh, to my sculpts and my paintings and everything, just just like you, I'm trying to outdo my last piece. My last piece is the benchmark. I want to go above that because yeah. if I do something yeah. that's just as good as it, or uh, as the last one, or something that maybe you know it's a time crunch and I don't feel that it it equaled the last piece that I did, I get really bummed out, man. Yeah. No, I know. You know, I know it. That that's a, that's a reality. Um, like. You know, it, it's it's one of those things where, you know, there, there's pieces I've done where, you know, it you know it was it was just it, you look at it as like it was just a job, uh, mm-hmm. I had to get it done, but it's out there, you know. Yeah. And it's like, you, you see, it and you're like, oh, like like 
I hate keeping bringing up this Trump thing, but uh, that cover I did um, where he's he's flinging tweets. Um, mm-hmm. I had to draw these little tweet birds, um, and in, I had in my mind I wanted them to be like more like Angry Birds. I thought it mm-hmm. would be funny, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. but I didn't. You know, it turned out that they kind of wanted them to be more like just like look more like the tweet logo and not right. not too far off from that. Yeah. Um, but the one thing about that cover that really drives me nuts is like I had to do the, the very very quickly, um, but then right towards the end I was running out of time and I only had like maybe I don't know twenty minutes or so twenty maybe thirty tops to do the, all the tweets. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing now I I I, st- I st- I'm happy with it I'm proud of it but I look at that and I'm like oh I see the tweets and I'm like I, I, they could have been better. Like isn't just, it funny how like, we can fixate on yeah. the worst part of a painting of ours? Yeah. Like, it could be it could be ninety nine percent awesome, and then there's the one thing that you're like, oh man, you know, what I mean? it's almost like we get it, body it dysmorphia ruins, for our yeah, work, and it ruins the whole thing. Like, the oh whole, totally, you're just like, I hate the totally. piece because the tweet birds, <laughs> dude. There's a piece I did one time for for EA. Um, there was a, a game called NFL Street, mm-hmm. and it I'll never forget it. It had Jeremy Shockey and uh, an exhibit were were on the on the you know on the cover. So what they did was they gave me photos of, uh, of, of, of exhibit and Shockey playing actually it was Shockey with his girlfriend playing the video game on a couch and all the pictures, I, I might've mentioned this to you before. All the pictures is him happy smiling at his girlfriend and, you know, just having a real good time and everything. And then, and then, uh, <laughs> EA is like, okay, so we want you to make him look angry and we want you, he's looking in this direction, we want you to make him look in a different direction and light it completely different. Okay, go. <laughs> and I was like, wait, what? So all the images I had were nothing like the angle that they wanted. I had no reference for him. Um, you know, if, if I'm, <laughs> oh my if, gosh. if I'm looking at you and you have a giant cheese on your face and, and you're like, okay, well now paint me angry. What am I supposed to do with that? Yeah. So, I painted his face easily 20 times and, and, and I mean to a finished level yeah. and gave it to them and they just kept revision, revision, revision. Oh. No, not quite there. Not quite there. Nightmare. Change a little bit. <laughs> Dude. And that job, I'm not even lying. That job, it took me, I worked on it for six months. I didn't get paid until the end of the year. I went almost an entire year off of one freaking job. Like that job almost broke me, man. If I wasn't married at the time, I would have been done. Oh my god! And I, I still don't show it. Like I won't show it in my portfolio because yeah. even though they were happy with it and it was on the cover of the damn game, I was like, "Damn, this sucks, dude. I'm not gonna show this." <laughs> yeah, there's there's been jobs I've done where I'm like, uh, not signing it. Uh, yeah. And I tell the art director, "Don't put my name in them. Uh, I don't even want my <laughs> right. name there." Yeah. Like they're like, "Are you? Are you?" And like, yeah. Just I don't because I mean especially earlier on when I was like trying so hard and like yeah. situations, but, but, um, so as you know, we've, uh, a bunch of fans, I asked a bunch of fans to draw you. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so we got, I think we got like 20 or 21 drawings sent in. Nice. So, nice. uh, so yeah, they're, they're pretty cool. So I'm going to, uh, can, can I, I wanted to ask if, can I share those on my Instagram? Yeah, of course. Yeah. I'll send awesome. them all to you. Fantastic. Um, I want to pimp my Instagram before we get off to yeah, of course. I, I need some followers. Yeah, we I always do that at the end. Um, cool. So uh, let's see here. So <laughs> so here's nice. the first one. This is by Fury Way. That's dope. Very so, cool. <laughs> so yeah, it's funny because like uh, you know I I don't when I when I you know send this out to people I don't say uh, you know hey you have to do caricature you can do anything you could do right. a sculpture or anything you want. Um, uh-huh. But uh, so you, I never know what's gonna show up, you know. Yeah. It's funny. That's um, funny. This one is uh, by Asmadi Abdullah. Nice. Um, is that? Uh, it reminds me of the. Um, what's the technique where you remove the black ink from the paper and it's like scratchboard? Yeah. 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 It's cool. It's interesting. He's been doing. He's been submitting to a, a lot of the episodes, and it's he's out. It's it's like this thing he's doing. Okay. Um, very scratchy and. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, it is. Oh, it looks like uh, like the Hulk and maybe Spider Man or Venom or something. No. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just noticed that. 
Yeah. I don't know who the other one is, but um, this one's interesting. Uh, oh, this is dude. By uh, Shukri Hamid. Wow. Um, that's very interesting. Very that's like conceptual as hell. That's very cool. Yeah. It looks like um, I don't know. It looks like it's like something you'd see in an episode of Fresh Prince of Bel Air, like on the side yeah. of a, a garage door or something. <laughs> very, very graffiti there. It's I like that, that. Like eighty or nineties feel to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, nice color palette, man. That's cool. Um, I'm a fan of. I'm a fan. Of, oh my god. Yeah. Who, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. This is by Aaron Black. Wow. Yeah, that's uh, that's dope, and yeah, I, cool. I love how the I love how he got how thick my glasses are, <laughs> and how they they completely <laughs> you know, distort my face. Thank you for that. <laughs> that's <laughs> well, awesome. That's dope. Man. <laughs> Very cool. Um, this one is nice. by Adita Bahasser. Okay, uh, ba- Bahasser. I don't know if I'm saying that right. <laughs> I mess up so many of the names. I would be terrible at, at all that. Um, that red really with the black and white. I did I did this kind of a technique once on a painting I did of Bernie Sanders. Mm-hmm. Um, they said I could do the art direction was hey make him look cool, and uh, and I was like that's 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 it. And you're like yeah you can do anything you want <laughs> like, right. and I was like, I so I just did like a black and white portrait and then just did this red and it just like bam, you know so that's that's a fun it, technique to do. Yeah. Definitely, I like it. I, I I love adding the the hit of color to a to a uh, monochromatic piece. Yeah, for sure. This is a cool one. <laughs> cool. This is uh. Oh, by thank Mar- God I'm not wearing that exact clothes today. Like I almost <laughs> put that gear on. That would have been embarrassing. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, this is by Mario Merriam. It's um, tight. Oh yeah, and by the way, I didn't talk about. I love the stuff that you've done with Ninja Turtles too. It's pretty cool. Oh, thanks, man. Thank yeah. you. I like. I love the. That I, when I was a kid, I was just obsessed with the turtles. I would just draw yeah. them nonstop, uh, make up my own style, and mm-hmm. so much fun. You know, that's my thing now. Like I'm, um, <laughs> nice. I'm doing a piece uh, where I have that helmet on my character. Is this now? Is this, this what we were talking about earlier? No, she did. She did the Hulk uh, thing, yeah, right? This is Matthew Matters, uh, Matterson. Uh, that's cool. Yeah, did like, wanted to do a ZBrush thing of you. That's Damn right. his. His helmet is so much better than mine. I'm jealous. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that's one of the things that I'm doing now is all of the the shows I used to love as a kid, the cartoons and stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm sculpting them on my uh, on my live stream for Pixelogic and trying to make them look like super realistic. Like I'm working on a trap jaw and you know this this is a that's character. so cool. Yeah, yeah, dude. You, you, and you got me like I'm really curious about the ZBrush stuff because I wanna I wanna mess with this man. I'm I'm really curious what I could do with it. Um, with caricature type stuff, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, it could be great, dude. I talked to, um, I talked to, uh, to Torin, um, uh, and, and we were talking about that as well. You know, like if you ever, if you ever want to hop in a room, man, I can show you some stuff. Yeah. That'd be great, man. That'd be fun. Nice. Yeah. Definitely. We'll take you up on that. <laughs> uh, this is by, yeah. um, Hakim Muslim or okay. Muslim. I'm not sure how they pronounce it, but. Uh, I like that style. I I have a book of graffiti from around the world, and there's a number of pieces that have this type of a feel. These like the bold color colors, yeah. and uh, that's that's dope. I remember that picture. Um, I went to uh, New York Comic Con, and there was an especially big uh, political zinger that I saw on on TV in the morning before I went in, and I made that face. <laughs> It um it almost when I, it almost looks like Eddie Murphy a little bit. Yeah, I was gonna say Bill Cosby, but yeah, I'll take Eddie Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> now, now I you, now I won't take Bill Cosby. You don't <laughs> want the pudding. I'm going to jail for a long time now. <laughs> yeah. put, put, putting the pills in the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> this, oh man, this one is uh by Daniel D- Dufford. Dude, these guys are making me look way cooler than I am in real life. Now that this is, how the hell do I compare to this? That's dope. That's awesome. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I, this is a cool style. Yeah, it is. Very cool. I like how I like how minimalistic the like the color is, but God, man, that looks. It almost feels like something that could be. Uh, 
what was it the netflix kind of like marvel stuff it feels oh, like yeah. something like that yeah that's awesome yeah it's got a cool look uh this one's by victor um got got me in ah got matian i don't cool. know how to say your name dude i mess it up you know every what? time <laughs> you're you're doing way better than i would i would be butchering names on this show that's awesome i'm just gonna say victor g victor g in the house oh, i can hear my, my daughter crying <laughs> too. this is cool man there's so many people took part in this this is awesome yeah yeah, this is I already interesting. I already style. have an inflated ego, so being able to see this now, I can have an even larger head on the next one. <laughs> there you go. Oh, nice. So this is by Julia Wolf. You know what, oh. Julia? I, I like it a lot. <laughs> that's that's awesome. awesome. Love those colors. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's cool. Don't make me angry, Mr. McGee. Yeah. Don't make me angry. <laughs> Uh, this, uh, oh that, man! Wow, that's kind of a coincidence that two of you as superheroes were in a row. That was not on purpose. Wow! Uh, but this is uh, by Ronnie Price. I like that too. That's, that's pretty awesome. Cool. That's funny. You were the Hulk and then Spider Man right in a row. So dynamic, man. Definitely. Yeah. And even even the glasses slipping down on my nose. Yeah. And now I can now I can fixate on that even more. <laughs> I like that's... how I like how it's uh, this. Spider Man without his mask just jumping mm -hmm. down. Yeah. And you know, and you just got this look on your face like, Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I do. Yeah, there's so no <laughs> You're like, Yeah, this is just natural. It's no no expression. <laughs> no big whoop, whatever. Yeah, I'm just jumping off the building. <laughs> this one's interesting too. This is by uh, Andrew Ellis. Cool. Oh, my pen broke. Yeah. Oh, I see what it happened there. You chopped it in half. That's 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 cool, man. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty funny. Nice. That's awesome. Yeah, this He's has a, like a, a, to me, this has like a nice, like New Yorker style to it. You know what's very interesting as I look at this? So I used to have an agent in New York, um, and the, the everybody in his, his group were very, uh, very kind of, um, well, they weren't realistic, their styles, right? Yeah. And they, they, they all got a lot of work, and they're, they're, they, it all looked really good. This style reminds me of that, but I was the only realistic type of an artist in that group, and I always felt like the the black sheep in there. <laughs> but this reminds me of that a lot. It's cool. <laughs> man. Yeah, uh, those of you can if listening to this, uh, my w one and a half year old is <laughs> running around upstairs. So if you hear a little kid, that's what the, that's what that's going on. Hmm. Uh, this one is by nice. Jamie Robles. That's cool. That's cool. That's the face yeah. I make every morning, actually, when I wake up. <laughs> and like, really? Very. Is this, um, is this what's happening? <laughs> this is my life now? Really? Okay. Yeah. Great. No, that's cool, man. Yeah. I like I like the furrowed brow. How in the hell are they capturing? Do I have the furrowed brow in my pictures? Because this is, this is the face I make now. These uh, <laughs> We were talking earlier about the yeah. things that are happening. Yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> I mean... I don't remember the picture offhand. I, yeah. I think I shared three references or something. Yeah, so yeah. So it must have been. This one's yeah, cool. Yeah, this man. is by it's Ivan Aginko. I like that. I also wish that uh, I, I was thin like that. That's dope. <laughs> yeah. Me too. This looks like it could be... Uh, this looks like it could be... Ask Ivan what he's using. Because it... You know what? No. This probably is photoshop i would love to i'm just very interested to know how many of your you know former students and and people who follow you and and whatnot use painter if any yeah i don't know i mean it's hard for me to tell sometimes yeah these days it's really difficult and a lot of people are using ipads too um, yeah so i had a, I, I did a critique for a student today and they did their work on the ipad and mm -hmm. they were saying how the they were saying how their values because the last critique, I, their values were way, way off. Hmm. Um, and they said it's because they had the brightness on their iPad to um, 100%. Oh, sure. Um, but I would assume that if the brightness is 100%, that that's the most accurate setting. But I guess not, right? I mean... Yeah, that's it's sketchy. Like, I have a mobile so Studio Pro. So how do you Pro. know? Yeah, I do too. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that, 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 if it's... It's very difficult to calibrate. Do you have a color calibrator? No, I need to get one. I don't All have right, one. So I bought one 
I was talking to Wacom actually, and they put me onto the one that they actually uh, use in the studio. And so I would sync that with my Cintiq and the Mobile Studio Pro and everything, and I got pretty good results. But I know that it it you can do an amazing painting. And if you have a color profile that doesn't match the client, you can get the most garbage result ever, man. Have you ever had that happen to you? It's happened a couple times. Um, and, and in fact, so this, I work on a 27 inch Cintiq, um, mm -hmm. and I have my older 21 inch on a rope, not a robot arm, but like a mechanical arm thing here. Yeah. Yeah. The um, yeah. And I use it for my, my references and stuff like that. But mm -hmm. my other Cintiq, my 21 inch has the more accurate color and okay. my 27 inch, it's too, there's too much red in it. So yeah. I have to like f flip things to the other screen just to like see how it's going. And it's kind of annoying. It's a yeah. weird way to work. Um, but I definitely, my friend uh, Grieger is actually supposed to come over and he said he's going to help me calibrate it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but I, when I was just, I'm going to go back to uh, Portland. I, I did like a, a demo at their headquarters and I'm yeah. going to be going back there again. And, um, they told me that they've got one of those things to, you know, that I can use one of their, uh, calibrators. They're, so they're nice to have because you would yeah. be surprised at how your monitor can just kind of get out of sync on its own sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And you don't even, you don't even know it. It's like how you felt about that pin. You could be, you know, that way with your, with your colors and not even know it. Yeah. It's really, it's really frustrating, man, because like I'll, I'll be working on something and I'll, slide it over and I'm like oh my gosh yeah it's yeah. so like it's like you know it's it's usually always the reds you know yeah yeah so definitely um <laughs> nice this one is by bright um aqua all right yeah i like that robot arm i did a a cover of um the uh corel painter one year where i had to make this girl that has a robot arm oh, and okay. uh yeah, it was it was crazy because there's um she's running and she has this paint that's kind of she's leaving a trail. It looks like somebody threw a bucket of paint behind her. Yeah. Um I really like that piece, but that was one where I used ZBrush to make the uh you know, make the base of the girl and then use that lighting reference to to paint it. But she had a robot arm, that's why I said that. Oh, okay. Yeah. Cool. That's cool. <laughs> that's awesome. Very very Alita. <laughs> nice. This is an interesting style. This is a uh, Michael Crotty. I like that. I like that. <laughs> That's very cool. I like the I like the angular uh, the angular fashion of that. Yeah, super snappy. It's kind of <laughs> kind of animated in a way. Uh, I have those. Uh, oh, I guess it was in the picture. It was in the yeah. Okay. All right. I was gonna say, how's he know the posters that I have them all? <laughs> yeah. um, oh man, it's Hunter Hunter Cam Campbell did this one. That's fresh. Yeah, nice, uh, nice painterly style for sure. Yeah, yeah, I like that. I like the the glasses again. Mm -hmm. like... <laughs> you can do a lot with these glasses. I see. I never thought about that. Yeah. I used to be so embarrassed as a kid because my vision has always been really bad. Yeah. So I'm at the point now where um, I wake up in the morning and I have to kind of like fumble for my glasses that are right next to me on the thing. Oh no. Yeah, yeah. I notice that the older I get, the more, more horrific that my. I figured I'd have robot eyes by now. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it, it, I'm sure it'll come. Yeah, sure. This one. Oh <laughs> man, what? This is, That's the winner. Uh, yeah. Winner. Game over, man. This is Mc, uh, Mikel Nolamas. Oh, game over. Okay, Mikel did homework yeah. and found the picture my sister took of me. <laughs> and did a caricature. Okay, this is props to you, my friend. <laughs> that's awesome. I love the color palette too, man. That's that's one of my things. I, I noticed that, you know, when, when artists don't use full black in the shadows, I, I just like it more. Oh yeah. Yeah, that's no that, it's I, I think it's cool too. It's like I, I was just talking to one of my students about values and how um right now I want you to focus on getting values exactly how they need to be, yeah. you know, dark is where it darks, the darks and the lightest and the lightest, you know, all that kind of stuff, find yeah. the mid tones so that once you have that down, then you have mm -hmm. the freedom to play with your values. And yeah. it, it's cool sometimes when you do a piece where there's no bright highlight and there's no dark, dark, you know, it's like, yeah. it's like a, you can get some awesome effects that way, but you have to understand it first. You can't, you know, 
yeah you, you got to learn the rules before you can break the rules so mm -hmm. this this mm -hmm. has a great style to it it really does i'm working on a gi joe piece now where i i noticed that when i had uh when i had my blacks too black um it was getting muddy right so i, I was like okay well let me go in and, and and lighten up those areas and not only does it feel more stylized but it really pops it too so yeah mm -hmm. yeah. yeah totally so um <laughs> this one's by laurent Grassot. cool Grassot or something like that cool cool <laughs> yeah there's, there's some there's some nice shapes in there too it's definitely cool. definitely and uh this is the last one. This is oh, by Jason Church. Nice. I am about to do the snap, y'all. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. Oh, you got the the, uh, uh, the Black, Black Panther. Panther chain around the yeah, that's oh man. So wait, is he trying to say you're the Black Panther and you kicked Thanos' ass and got his glove? Okay. All right. Second favorite. Second favorite, because <laughs> I'm way more powerful than I should be for any one person. So yeah. <laughs> Very cool. That's oh, pretty that's awesome. Dope. Yeah, it is. Cool, man. All right. This is nice, Let's... man. Yeah, no, I definitely want to put these up on my Instagram too. Yeah, I'll let you know for sure. So do do me a favor. Um, if uh if these guys have Instagram handles that I can that I can tag them with on here, that'd be awesome. Um, I don't. I don't know, know if they if... submitted anything. Yeah, like I don't that. know. I, I I should maybe ask them that. The only thing is, it actually it gets a little bit hard for me to organize. Okay. Uh, because there's so many. Um, like I just created a new email for the podcast, face the truth mm -hmm. podcast at uh, mm -hmm. Gmail, because it's been starting to get nuts. Um, and like when I did Thomas flu Hardy's episode, there was, I think 95 submissions. Wow. It was insane. And wow. I, and I had to choose, choose like, I, I don't remember how many, I think 16 to 20 mm -hmm. for the actual episode. And then he was nice enough to make an extra bonus episode so wow. that, uh, we could, uh, uh, show the people's work, but I couldn't make the whole episode about other people's drawings, you know? Sure, sure, sure. Sure. <laughs> so, um, so anyways, uh, yeah, that was cool, man. We've been going on for a while. Um, so I, I wanted, before we wrap up, I just wanted to know if there was anything that you wanted to, to, uh, to mention what you've been working on, like new stuff or where people can yeah. be directed and all that kind of stuff. Because, um, you know, like, I don't know, like Twitter, Instagram, all that kind of stuff or new projects. Definitely. Yeah, definitely, man. I appreciate it. So um, if the people have time, um, if you follow my Instagram, which is uh, at Mike T Artworks with a S, um, that's where I usually I usually promote on there or on my Facebook. Same thing at Mike T Artworks. Uh, and what I've been doing lately is I think I have under my belt now maybe – I think I have maybe like 17, 18 uh, streams that I've done for Pixelogic uh, that are on my YouTube and on the Pixelogic YouTube page where I'm sculpting uh, for two to three hours each. Um, and uh, so you can check that out. It's every every other week. So I have one coming next Wednesday. Um, That's and awesome. you can. Yeah, so if you want to see, like, even if you want to pop your head in for a second and just see how I do what I do, um, that's really cool. A lot of free content as far as learning ZBrush is concerned with that. So um, as far as new projects, I am fortunate enough to be back uh, working with Hasbro again. So I'm getting to do what I love, which is toy packaging. Um, that's really cool. Yeah, yeah. I love it, man. I, I'm, you know, I never really fully matured as an adult so all of the toys and stuff and cartoons that i loved as a kid you know you were talking about ninja turtles earlier um you know whenever i get to paint them or sculpt them or whatever it's a great day for me so oh superheroes yeah especially. no that's so much fun man that's yeah. why I, that's why I, I told my daughter um she like i, I was watching uh, thor ragnarok last night and yeah and um that scene where um thor's just about to kick the hulk's ass Mm -hmm. And then they zap him and he passes out. I go, oh, yeah. I go, that sucks. And, I, and my <laughs> daughter's like, you're such a dork. You're like, so, <laughs> you're like, you're so in, you're like so into the, what's going on right now. You're such, such a dork. I'm like, yeah, I, I care about it. I'm watching the movie. I'm invested in it. You've seen it a hundred times. You're acting like you never knew this was going to happen. I'm like, yeah. Well, every time I see that scene, it sucks because it's not fair because I want to <laughs> watch Thor kick his ass. I, right, like that was right. it was about to be an awesome thing, and then th then he jumps on him and stuff. It's not fair, 
And now, how how old is your daughter that was saying that? She's fifteen. Okay, <laughs> she's yeah, saying yeah, you're yeah. a dork, you know. And uh, and then my my twelve year old daughter was like, you know, getting in on it, like, you know, yeah, you're such a dork. You get you're so in, excited. I'm like, you guys don't understand. When I was a kid, these movies didn't exist. Okay, sure. we we had Star Wars and Indiana Jones and the first Superman movie, um, and Goonies. But yep. you know that was pretty much it. Okay, now there's like epic, amazing movies coming out like every day, mm-hmm. and I actually get to see these characters, like, like it's so it's awesome. Yeah, like, yeah. That like, you you used to only see them in comic books, and now yeah. you're seeing them actually doing stuff. Yeah, so it's yeah. great, and so like it's just funny because same thing. Like I feel like a kid again. Like I get to watch these. Like I love watching these movies. It's like awesome, man. It's it's a good way to get my mind off of uh, real crap that's going on. <laughs> exactly. You know, daughters are very good for that. There was my my daughter is uh, she's going to be going to college uh, later this year. She actually graduates um, uh, in a couple months, and she is so mature. Like she's uh, she like <laughs> yeah. totally gets that from my wife. My son is like me. He loves Star Wars and all this other like superheroes and all that, but. Um, I just remember saying something to my daughter one time and the way she answered me, I was like, I I was like, look, I have to take that from your mom because I married her. But I'm like, <laughs> you're my daughter. Don't you don't talk to me like that. She's yeah. like, oh, whatever, dad. OK, all right, cool. <laughs> yeah, I deal with the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, yeah. man. Well, dude, it's been a, a pleasure having you on here, man. It's been awesome. Thanks. Man. And uh, we definitely have to do it again because there's so much more stuff to talk about. So definitely. um yeah, uh, it's it's just awesome, man. And and like like I said before, I'm definitely down for for messing with Painter, um, and I'm really excited about checking out uh, ZBrush. So, yeah, definitely. Hey, one definitely. last thing I wanted to ask you before we go. Yes, um, sir. Have you heard of uh, of the Lightbox Expo? When is that? No, I um, haven't. It's that. Bobby Chu is um, starting an art expo. Um, just check it out. I think it's LightboxExpo.com. Mm-hmm. And um, it's like a normal con- convention type thing, but you can get a booth. Um, and there's just going to be so- tons of awesome artists doing demos and workshops. Nice. And, um, and it's basically it's it's just it's supposed to be a convention for artists supporting artists and like building a huge art community. Okay. And um, it's going to be in Pasadena in uh, September. And okay. uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. You should. I think you you dig it. Um, That's dope. I yeah. I actually in September I'm doing a um, a Latin American uh, like college tour for Wacom. Oh, cool. I'm, um, so I as long as it's not that first couple of weeks, I'll definitely check it out, man. Oh, I think I think it might be. I think might it's be. the weekend of the sixth. Okay. I think I okay. I don't I could be wrong, but anyways, check it out. Um, uh, it's it's gonna be really cool. So nice. But uh, yeah. Anyways, man, this was awesome and um. Thank you for doing it, man. We'll have to talk soon again. Definitely, <laughs> man. Thanks. Yeah, you know, you have to hit me up whenever you want to learn some uh, painter or ZBrush stuff. We can definitely chop it up. Oh, dude, that will be awesome. Thanks, man. Cool. Thanks, Jason.